Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys my workflow in setting up the HTC Mars CamTrack tracking system with Axiometry DE or dual engine. Axiometry that's using Unreal Engine. Now, I'm not going to be discussing how to set up the Mars system with Unreal because you can connect directly, right? Without using Axiometry, using the LiveLink protocol. And that is not something I'm gonna be talking about. So if that's what you're after, this might not be the right video for you. I'm just putting that out there so to not waste your time. But other than that, welcome to my studio. So this is our very own virtual production studio and some of you might think, wow, that's a really small studio, but it is actually big enough for the types of productions that we do here, which is uh, mostly uh, esports. Uh, we usually never have more than three people on the green screen. So this is um, just about the right size for us. So we have the control room over here inside with the, you know, the PCs, with the vMix, Axymetry uh, and all that. And this is our uh, green area where we have our casters or our talent. So the first thing that uh, I wanna do is first of all, I have to make sure, okay, are we going to be having our next production here? Fine, it's locked, great. Once we have the location locked, because we don't always just shoot here, sometimes we shoot at a bigger studio that, that we ran out, but once it's locked, so I know that I'm gonna be building my set uh, based on the actual location, because when you're working with a tracking system, um, I don't know if my English is correct or not, but everything needs to be designed to scale. Basically what I'm trying to say is that the measurements from your actual set, your green, your studio, should match your measurements in Unreal Engine and in Axymetry. So your real set should match your Unreal set in terms of measurement. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually measure my green screen. And it's always handy to have one of these. This is like one of those uh, laser measurements. And I'm going to be, you know, like measuring my green from side to side. Okay, once I've gotten the measurement from my green screen, I'm gonna grab one of these uh, rovers from the Mars kit. I don't need to have the tracker on it right now. And now I have to define where my zero or my center point is going to be. And I wanna choose somewhere in the middle here in the beginning of my green screen. And the reason why I'm doing this, like all the way on this side, is because for me personally, I'm not really going to have my camera move too much with, within the, the green. It's gonna be moving somewhere around behind. So I'm gonna be building my Unreal set from this point uh, forward. And uh, so this is going to be my Zero, 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 so X, Y, Z, zero, zero, zero within Unreal and also in Axymetry. And it's going to be my center point for the trackers as well. Later on, I wanna show you guys that you can recenter um, each of your trackers. And this is the point where I am going to recenter the trackers. And if you have more than one tracker, you wanna recenter all the three trackers at the exact same location. So this shouldn't move and to make sure it doesn't move, I'm just gonna use these gaffer tapes, I think you call them, and just sort of like mark where it's supposed to be. All right, guys, before we continue with the tutorial, I would like to make a quick stop to the Unreal Editor for Axymetry. And this is just something that I like to do. It will make things easier for the production. And you guys can choose to do this or you can skip it. It is uh, totally up to you. So this has to do with uh, what we just did, where we just set up the center point or the zero of our real set. Now I um, sort of want to set up my zero in the uh, virtual set. So I've made a new level here. It's called virtual stage. This is where I will be building my virtual set. And the first thing I'm going to do before anything at all, this is an empty level, is add camera and add track cam. So I'm going to set it to the unlit mode so I can see it more clearly. And here is my camera. So now because I've done this, I know where my camera is pointing. And this will be the same direction as where my real camera in the real world will be pointing as well. And it is positioned at location 000. So this zero center point is the same 
as the zero center point in my real set. And when we load up the stage later on in Asymmetry, I won't have to move my set too much around because it will already be where it is supposed to be. Therefore, just making the production just easier overall, you know, less time fiddling around. So uh, what I want to do now is because I've already measured my green screen, right? I'm actually going to recreate uh, my, my, my green screen area right in front of the uh, camera. So I'm going to use a pack from the super grid here. It's a free pack from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. And I'm going, and I'm going to be talking a lot about this uh, super grid when I will be making my video, uh, how to make a virtual set from scratch. But uh, for now, I'm just going to use an asset from there called the uh, super grid box centered. And I'm going to give it the size of my green screen. So it's uh, so it's 3.4 meters, 3.4 meters. And as you can see, these big boxes represent uh, 50 centimeters. So it's like one, two, three, 3.4 meters. And uh, I like this uh, gridded box mesh because it's sort of like similar to the one that uh, Axiometry has when you're trying to set up the studio green space, which uh, we will see later. So um, I want it to be right in front of the camera and uh, it's going to be 3.4 by 4.6. Six. There you go. And I'm just going to, it's supposed to be on the floor. So I'm just going to make it 0 0.1. And now I'm going to go to the like top and side view and be from the right and just like bring it up to making sure that it is in the center. Yes, and from the top view, yes, it is. So I have it exactly where it is supposed to be. All right, so I have my green screen area. I have my camera. It's pointing directly to the green screen. And now uh, I can actually just save this and I can send this file to the person who will be making the stage because now that person will know that okay this is the area where the talents are going to be standing so the designer can build the stage around this area so there's like a starting point for them to build the set and once it's done and we load it up it's gonna be really uh, easy to set up the cameras because it will already be where it is supposed to be in the virtual space all right, so now let's continue with the setup. And I wanna talk about uh, the gear a little bit here. Cause uh, when you purchase the Mars cam track, you get um, the Mars, of course, and you get three rovers, these, and you get two trackers, right? Two trackers. And you get two base stations. So um, I really recommend that if you wanna, you know, track three cameras, you need to buy a third tracker since you already have three rovers right and for the base stations i really recommend you buy an extra two base stations because the mars system can make use of four base stations so you get two base stations 2.0 you should get another two base stations 2.0 and even though i have a small you know like area for my production i still like having four because just in case if you know like some of the base stations is like being covered by blocked you know the view to the tracker is being blocked by a person or by a light or something the other two can still pick it up and your tracking data won't be messed up so as you can see i have uh, my base stations uh, set up it's just drilled to the wall on every corner of my studio and they're sort of like pointing down towards where my cameras will be moving. And as you can see, I have already set some uh, power outlet on the ceiling so that I don't have to have any cables, you know, like dangling down. I can just like plug directly into the power source. And I actually have a switch on the wall that controls those power sources. So I can just like flip on a switch and all my base stations will turn on. And it's an independent switch separated from the lighting. Okay, so since my base stations are set up now, I'm gonna set my tracker on the rover and connect it with the provided cables, right? USB to USB-C. And of course it's, you know, it's using a screw right here that you can use to unscrew and screw the uh, tracker on the rover. And as you can see, I have a little tape here. And I know this isn't really pretty. I might find something else to replace this. But the reason why I have this is because if I just connect the tracker directly, 
we found that it actually sort of like moves a little bit so it's not really stuck on like that hard or like you know like permanently and when it comes to tracking i really really want everything to be as you know we don't want any unnecessary movements so i you know i, I don't want i want to i want a clean track i don't want to have any g jitters or anything and i don't want when the camera makes sudden moves and then the you know it, it'll like move around or something like that. so you really want to have everything stuck on there good so uh i've made sure on that see there's like no movement at all so that's uh that's about it you know set up your tracker to your rover and then we're gonna connect the rover over here see with the provided um cables and i'm going to be plugging it into my port number one here in the mars main unit so if you have three cameras you know you'll have three rovers three trackers you can you know populate all three plugs so the mars can handle three inputs maximum all right so once that's done right i'm going to connect the mars unit to my main router that's going to be connected to my pc okay so this cable is going into my router now i want to i want to talk a little bit about connecting the mars to the pc because uh, some people, you know, they, they, they don't use a router or, or a switch and so on. They just connect from the Mars directly to the PC. Me, I use a router um, because I still want my PC to be connected to uh, the internet while I'm doing my production. Some people have those motherboards which you have uh, two uh, Ethernet inputs. So they use one for their internet and they use one for uh, the Mars. That's also possible. But me, I haven't had any issues by just connecting the Mars to the network where all our PCs, so with the same network as all our PCs within the control room. So that's just the way I do it. I haven't had any issues with that. But if you want to connect it directly to the PC, go ahead. All right, so next I want to talk about the sync generator that we're using. We're using the Blackmagic Design Mini Converter Sync Generator. Of course, you can use any sync gen that you want. You know, I know Aja makes them and so on. And um, so basically, we need to have everything synced, right? Uh, the camera, the Mars, and the PC. So as you can see, I have an input, an output, sorry, a reference output for each. This one, is going to go uh, inside the Mars, and one is gonna go to the uh, camera, and one is going to the PC. All right, so a sync generator is absolutely essential if you wanna get a clean track. If you don't use one, you're gonna have drifting because the frames aren't in sync and all that. So they're not that expensive. It's definitely a must have. And I'm gonna turn on the Mars system. So as you can see, as soon as I turn on the Mars, I get a system update available. And this is one of the reasons why I like having my Mars connected to our main network that's connected to the internet so that I always know when there is a system update. If I connect it directly to the computer and it's not connected to the internet, you know, I can't really tell when there are updates and so on. So I'm gonna update my system. All right, now that I'm done with the update and now it's asking to update my Rover. So the, the previous was the update for the Vive, now we're gonna update the rover itself. So update now, and that's done. So now we are at the Mars main menu. And a few things that I need to check now is, first of all, is my tracker being detected? And yes, in fact, I do have one tracker connected to the Mars system. And I have the slots for the four base stations next to it and uh, right now i have three base stations being detected and one that is not so i'm going to go ahead and fix this okay so i'm going to do a little bit of troubleshooting here and i you know i like including these things in the video you never know if it's going to happen to one of you out there so i have four base stations uh three of them is being picked up by the mars and one is not so one of these is having an issue and the problem is we don't really know which one is the one that's not being detected. So what I like to do, so I'm not gonna go, you know, on a, you know, get a ladder and like turn it off one at a time and all that. So I'm just gonna grab my calibration board and I'm gonna place my uh, tracker somewhere in the middle where, you know, all four base stations can detect it. And I'm just gonna start, you know, covering one of each, you know, like for example, I'm gonna cover this one and, you know, I'm gonna have someone see on the Mars if, it will, you know, if one of them will turn off. So I have three, if I cover this one and there's one less, that means this one is active. And then I'm just gonna go to another one. 
for example, like this one, see if I cover it up, you know, will it reduce one that's active or not? If I cover it and none of them turn off, I still have three of them. That means this is the one that is having the issue. And then, you know, I can look into it. Maybe it's dirty, maybe it's, uh, there's a problem to it or what not. So that's how I troubleshoot it. All right, so now as you can see, we fixed the issue and all four base stations are being detected. And actually we had to replace the one that wasn't functioning because we don't know what the issue is yet. But that is why I actually recommend, you know, not just having like four base stations, we actually have six. So we have two that serve as backup because you never know if one of them will have an issue, then you have a replacement. Okay, so the base station issue is done. Four base stations, one tracker, all is good. And now I can see that the gen lock is not properly set because for my production, I'm actually going to use 50p. So then I'm gonna go to my sync generator and I'm going to set it to 50p. But actually like this is not really relevant because this will depend on the sync generator that you will be using. Each will have different ways of uh, setting the desired uh, frame rate. All right, so I set my uh, sync generator to 50p and as you can see now there is written on the screen gen lock at 50. Now if you go to settings and there is here that something that says synchronization frequency FPS and mine is set to 50. You can click on the drop down and set it to your desired FPS. Now, if you do this and you don't see some of the ones you see here, it means you might need a software update because I know some of the older uh, software versions only included like 30 and 60p or something like that, but you didn't have all of these. You didn't have the 50, for example, and now you do. So just get a software update and you should get it. So set your synchronization frequency FPS to the gen lock that you're using. All right, next, let's start talking about the networking. All right, so let's start with the Mars network. And, you know, I'm plugging this into a router and I can just use, you know, obtain IP address automatically, dynamically, and all that. If you want to use a static one, go ahead. And I just want to let you guys know something. I think this is uh, worth mentioning that um, I usually use a one, uh, sorry, I usually use a 192 IP address. Why? Because uh, we've had some friends in the community that use like a 169 and they've had issues with the Mars, you know, the tracking data not being detected within Xsymmetry. So I don't know, I thought this is just something worth telling you guys that if possible, try to use a 192 uh, IP address. But for me, I just use it automatically and I don't want to, you know, worry too much about all this and apply and I'm good. So next, I'm gonna talk about the camera tracking protocol. And here, as you can see, there's LiveLink and FreeD. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'm not gonna be talking about LiveLink. LiveLink is to connect directly to Unreal Engine if you wanna do a production with an Unreal Engine using a camera tracker. We're gonna be using FreeD because this is the protocol used for the Mars to send the tracking data to Axymmetry. So here there's an IP address and this is going to be the IP address of your computer. So you can, you know, check it on your computer. What is the IP address? Set it here and set your port. So once you set this, you should be good to go and click apply. And the last thing we need to do is recenter your tracker. So this is what I was talking uh, about earlier about setting your tracker at your zero or your center point. So I'm gonna click recenter, and here it says recenter virtual space for tracker one. Because uh, we have tracker one only connected, it's gonna show the option for tracker one and I can just tap it. But before I do that, I have to make sure my rover and tracker is set at the zero position. All right, so we already marked our you know center point or our zero in the beginning of the video. So now I just need to put my rover right here. And now I can just tap this button. And that's it. So if I have three rovers or three cameras to track, I just have to repeat the same step with each of the trackers. All right, so once you've recentered all your trackers, um, you're actually done. You don't really need to touch the Mars unit anymore. We can move on to the PC, but I just want to note that if for some reason, you know, there's a power outage or you turn off the Mars and you turn it back on again, you should recenter all your trackers again at the zero or at the center point. Otherwise, you might have issues that had happened to me before. So if it goes off, recenter again. And um, 
If everything is recentered properly and you have a multi-cam system, uh, everything should, when you switch between the cameras, the positions and all that should be correct because the trackers will know where they're supposed to be in the 3D space in relation to where the uh, point of zero is. So that's that, let's move on to the PC. All right, so I'm gonna open up Aximetry now and I'm gonna go to Manage Devices and I'm gonna go down and look for the 3D protocol under camera tracking. There it is, so I'm gonna click Add. So I'm just gonna use my, select my you know, network adapter. And you know, I set the port to 2000 on the Mars and I'm gonna set this camera ID to one because I only have one camera. So you need to set the camera IDs. If you have three cameras, camera two, camera three, and so on. So that's done. And I've, so I've added my tracker to uh, Aximetry now. Apply, okay. And now the only thing left to do before we can you know, you know, start you know, testing our set and the tracking is to calibrate the lens with your camera and the tracker together. Now, I've made a separate video on doing this because it's quite a process and just to make it easy for those of you who only want to, you know, sort of like uh, go directly to the tracking process. So I've prepared a separate video for that. So feel free to pause the video, watch that video again. And once you're done with the calibration process, get back to this video. All right, so we're done with the uh, camera lens tracker calibration process and which is why we have now moved our camera from the tripod to the porter jib. And we love the porter jib because you know you can get so many different angles with it. You can have like buttery smooth movement. Uh, so yeah, and then you can like mount all your power terminals and all that on the uh, porter jib itself because you're not really restricted to weight and things like that. So we're done. The only thing left to do is to set it up in Aximetry and test it out. Let's go. All right, so I'm heading back to Unreal for a bit and I just wanna show you guys, I added some pillars and some colors on the ground so just that it's not a plain stage so that we can feel the movement of the camera. There's a parallax. So, uh, okay, so I'm done with this. Uh, make sure my camera is a tracked camera and I'm just going to save all and cook content for Aximetry DE. All right, so we are inside Aximetry. I'm gonna make sure my FPS is correct. I'm using 50p because we are genlock at 50p, so this is correct. Uh, so I'm gonna create new compound and I'm gonna go under uh, camera because I'm using the latest version of Aximetry and it is a little bit different here and the uh, file locations and I'm gonna choose a track cam Unreal and with the three cam option, I'm gonna drag this in here. And I'm gonna drag my project, the tutorial that I made and uh, Mars tutorial project. Bring it in here and let's connect all the wires. All right, and now let's set up the camera. Camera one, that's okay. So let's go to inputs and turn off input two and three. Input one, and for the camera, I'm gonna be using my input. It is the Blackmagic SDI 4K. And I can see the feed now, of my camera. And for the tracker, I'm gonna be using the 3D one, our tracking system. Okay, so we can see the camera feed here and I'm just gonna test that our tracking is working. I'm gonna to go to studio mode here and can someone help move the camera a little bit? Tilt down, tilt up. All right, so as you can see, the tracking data is being fed. Uh, we can see, still see the green, so the keying is not working and I'm gonna go into my key here and it's because it is still set to clean play 3 generator. And because I'm using the latest version of uh, Aximetry compatible with the Unreal Engine 5.2, it has a new feature called Clean Play 3D Generator. And I will be talking about this feature in a separate video. For now, I'm gonna go back to Advanced Gear B. And now it's being keyed. And I'm gonna try and turn it off for a bit and just try and get the color of the green screen. Okay, and then turn it on again. So that looks not bad. I'm gonna get rise the low cut a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to final and as you can see, now we can see the stage that we made in Unreal. All right, so now that I know my uh, tracking is working, 
I'm gonna go back to the studio tab and now I need to define the area of my green screen so that Aximetry know which areas to key and which areas to just cut out. So if my cameraman would tilt down a little bit, okay, stop and you see the area that's green over there is going to be keyed out and the area that's not that's not having any green on it is just going to be uh, cut out. And if we tilt down a little more, you can see that square is the zero zero mark. And if you remember earlier on, we set our trackers to be centered right on the same location. So now I'm gonna adjust my green and I'm gonna start by the floor, the green floor over here and I'm gonna pull it forward. Okay, hold on, hold the camera until it gets to the green over there. I'm gonna just I usually leave a little bit of space, so not too much to the edge because I'm not going to be moving any talent all the way there anyway. So we're done with the bottom part. Let's look to the left side. And I just want to point out to you guys that these squares, right, these represent 50 centimeters. If I look at the floor, like there's like one, two, three, about four meters of green and that is correct, right? So um, this is actually already like pretty close to my actual green screen but on the left side as you can see I have a green as well so I want to key that out as well so like I think it's wait this one green front left oh no it's not that one control Z so green left okay that is the one so look left please cameraman all right over there and go to the other side and so the right side I'm gonna add some green as well so let's check out the top part. Look to the left side. Okay, so I think that should do it for now. All right, once you've already defined the area of your green screen, now it's time to adjust your tracking delay. And a few things that you need to check first is, first of all, you have to make sure that the calibration profile is already set to the profile that you used uh, to calibrate your camera lens and uh, tracker. So uh, uh, again, I had a separate video on how to do this and this is my profile right here. I'm using the BGH1 with the Zuiko set at 14 uh, millimeter. And then next, uh, I wanna make sure my camera is gen locked. So I'm gonna hit the SDI here on screen and it's gonna show a G if you are genlocked with the Mars and the camera. So we're all good here. And so now for the tracking delay, let's go back here to the studio mode. And so I have put a chair here and we have two markers that we can use. So your marker position one, I'm gonna pull this up and I'm gonna set it to one of the feet of the chair. Like Okay, for example, this one, marker one. And I have another marker, which I'm gonna set on the other feet of the chair. All right, so this is a good setup to check your delay. And you can have your Mr. Cameraman to move left and right. And as you can see, it's uh, dragging quite a lot. So I'm gonna select my input. And if I go down here, there's a part that says track delay. And the way I do this is, so you can either go minus, you can like, you know, like go minus or you can go plus, right? And the way to look at this is like this. As you can see from the image, uh, when he's panning left and right, you can see that the video input is faster than the tracker because you can see that the feet of the chair is moving first and then the tracker tracker markers is following behind it so I need to add a number to the tracking delay so I'm not adding to the delay I'm telling Aximetry like okay I think there is a delay of maybe two and as you can see now it's less dragging and maybe I can go up to three and now the feet of the chair is getting closer to the markers it's not really that much ahead of it. So this number is the number that you think there is the, this certain amount of delay between the tracking and the camera. So I need to add just a little bit more, maybe 3.5. And now it's really sticking to it. 
right? And maybe I can just add number. And you need to like really fine tune this afterwards, like maybe like 5.3 and, or maybe like 5.5. .5. You know, but let's just say like this is good enough for me right now. You guys can really get that perfect number. But anyway, this is the way to do it. And once you're happy with the delay, um, you know, you can go back to your final mode and take out your chair and add a proper talent to it. Let's go, guys. Okay, so now we have our talent and we can test moving the camera around. Go ahead. <laughs> And that is all there is to it. That is how I set up my Mars camera tracker with Axisymmetry Dual Engine. I hope it's useful to you guys that are just, you know, getting started setting up with the system that just purchase it. And, you know, I'm only human. <laughs> If you guys know better than me, have more experience, you guys looking, watching my video, I was like, yo, this guy forgot to mention this, 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 and that. By all means, write it down in the comments and I will pin it or add it to the description, okay? Or maybe I will make another video in the future and add your tips into it. Other than that, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you find it useful and I'll see you guys in the next video.